Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and you are most welcome. Now, you will have been able to tell from the uh, thumbnail, the title and uh, quite frankly if you read any of it the description but this film is a list of my favorite non makeup channels now you'll know I've got a lot of people that I collab with I've got a lot of smaller channels that I support we support each other we are not like the rest of the backstabbing beauty community who once they get above a certain number seem to think that they are God and can do whatever they like and behave however they wish. We're not like that. But I thought you might be interested because I don't watch makeup films all the time, especially if there's a new release out that I'm going to use, like for example the Mitchell palette um, or the Book of Shadows palette from um, Beauty Bay. Because I don't want to see other people's opinion on it. I want to be able to form my own opinion. I don't want it to be influenced by anything they've said. So I very I have an awful lot of films that are not makeup related whatsoever that I follow. And I thought maybe you might be interested to uh, to know what they are, really. So, now's a good time. Sammy the Sloth Straw has appeared. This is your cue. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And get comfy. Because I'm going to give you my top 15. Right, these are in no particular order. I literally went through my recommended feed and <laughs> wrote down the channels that I watch most often in the order they came up in my feed that particular day. So, starting off with Peter Mon. Now, if you've watched my frankly quite embarrassing first ever video on this channel I explain how my when will I be YouTube famous thing tune came around it was partly inspired by Peter Mon's tongue-in-cheek I'm YouTube famous now intro that he does and my love of uh, <coughs> Bross from when I was a teenager who sang when will I Will I be famous? So I combined the two together. There's my theme tune. I don't think I've forgotten to sing it in any of my films. And in fact, quite a few of you have actually recorded your own version and sent it to me. And I've included a few of them in a couple of films that I've done in the past because I just thought it was amazing. Um, Peter at the moment has six channels. The man's an overachiever. He has his usual Peter Mon channel, which is what I first discovered him through. It's a commentary channel. Um, I suppose you'd call it a tea channel, where he discusses what's going on in the YouTube world. Um, but he also tries to give advice to people that are in those situations and what he feels would be an appropriate way forward for them to either develop their personalities or deal with the situation or just expand their knowledge. Um, I'm going to be putting pictures up over here somewhere probably of all of the, the people as I talk about them. So there's the Peter Mon channel 
This is Peter Vlogs and he's just hit like 1400, like 1400, where he's vlogged every single day. That's dedication, man. All kinds of things he discusses in his vlog, but they're great. I tend to put them on at the end of the night when I need to go to sleep and just fall asleep listening to him. I think half the time I, I end up watching the rest of the vlog in the morning. So, <clears throat> to be honest, I normally stick it on when I'm in the shower. If I haven't got music going, I'll stick Peter Mon's vlog on in the shower because I haven't got to watch it. I can just listen. Uh, then this is Peterism's channel where he gives um, like daily mantras and talks about things that have gone on in his life and how how you can live a calmer, more productive, stable life in this world which is just... Well, 2020's basically been Jumanji in real life, hasn't it? Um, he has his Peter Likes Books, where he has his own book club, where they all read through the same book and then he discusses it. And fabulous. Love it. Um, then he has his Peter Reviews stuff, which is exactly what it says on the tin. At the moment, he's going through all the Christmas drinks at Starbucks, which is great. I love it. Um, and then his most recent channel is Peter Does Stuff, which is just him doing stuff. Literally, like, you know, going to the garden centre and picking up more plants, or uh, cooking in the kitchen, or, you know, grooming the dogs, taking the dogs for a walk. Just chatting away as if you're chatting to a friend of yours. And I absolutely love his channel. I love his voice. He's really soothing to listen to. And he's actually really funny as well. So the next person, the next channel that came up on my feed list, I'm like, oh yeah, he's going to be on the list, is Dustin Daly. Funny enough, a tea channel. Uh, but he is just, he's the sweetest little chipmunk. Um, I don't know why, he reminds me of a chipmunk. Probably Theodore. Because he was the cutest of the three, wasn't he? Um, he covers drama, drama, going on in the YouTube community. And um, he can be very bitchy with it. Which, let's face it, we've all got that friend that can be, you know, they don't, they don't say much when they do. He's, he's, yeah, love him. And he actually follows me, not only on Twitter, but he put a comment on one of my earlier films, a notification squad. So, hi Dustin, if you're watching, love you still. Mwah. Thank you for being part of the 4F family. Uh, the next one is, well it's kind of two channels, but I'll explain. Crypto NWO, or Kevin, started off by doing um, dark web mystery boxes. And then he got into the Rando Nautica and started to bring his sister with him. And she was so popular, she started her own channel called Penguina Loca. Um, she hasn't uploaded much on there recently, but she's a full, you know, she's she's got a job and she's a mum, so she's she you know she has to fit it in around that stuff. Um, Kevin's most recent one wasn't a rando nautica; it was a, a dark web unboxing, so that was quite cool. Um, Canadian, extremely well spoken. But in one film didn't know what a slap bracelet was. And one of the funniest dark web unboxings was when he got sent a load of uh, <clears throat> S&M gear. 
you know, ball gags and collars and restraints and I had no idea what they were. Bless him. Uh, number four on my list, like I said, these aren't in any particular order, it's just that I made sure I had 15. Number four is another tea channel, but it's a newer one, and it's Tea Time, which is Nikki and Mocha discussing YouTube in all its dirty little essence. Um, they've been friends for a hell of a long time. Uh, going right back to college, I believe, back to uni. And they just bounce off each other so well. Nikki does the majority of the the talking. But Mocha's one of these people who... She's a published author for a start. So she thinks before she speaks. And what she comes out with is real gems, real gems. Absolutely love the woman. And she has the most amazing shaped mouth and lovely skin. Oh, her skin colour is awesome. Anyway, enough fangirling. Uh, next one is Ready to Glare, which is Juliana, spelt the Italian way, G-U, or G-I-U, rather, Juliana. Um, English is actually her second language, but you'd never know it until she reads something out in with, with like Italian surnames or Spanish surnames, and then you can really hear her original accent. Um, she, she's not so much a tea channel, she's more of a, I mean she comments on news articles like, you know, female teachers not being treated as harshly as male teachers when they have affairs with school kids. Basically, if you're in a position of power and they're children, you're a paedophile. But there's this whole, Whoa, get in there son. If it's a 15 year old boy and his 23 year old school teacher, but you swap those genders around and it gets looked at very differently. And she covers a lot of things like that. Um, she spoke to a map which is what paedophiles are calling themselves now, minor attracted person. How she managed to do that without losing her absolute shit with him, I do not know. I've got a lot of respect for the woman. She's... It's not a tea channel, it's, it's more of a... I suppose a reportage channel. It is like listening to the news or like a documentary almost, little mini documentaries from her. So, that's, that's not one I would recommend mm. for younger viewers. Um, because some of the subjects that she touches on can be very triggering. Moving on to the Creaky Blinder. I love him. He's brilliant. He's a Welshman, as you can probably tell from the fact that my Welsh accent is you and up front. Um, he loves taking the piss out of flat earthers. And let's face it, it's such an easy thing to do. But he's so funny with it. Oh my god, he, f he finds some of the craziest people on YouTube. Not just flat earthers, but all kinds of people who spout weird stuff on YouTube and uh, basically he says he's not a tea channel he's a laugh and point at them channel which I think is a great way of describing it absolutely love him I actually sent him a link to a film uh, last week I said oi creaky man have you seen this it's bloody brilliant 
And he replied back saying, I didn't even have to look at your profile to see you were Welsh, man. <laughs> oh yeah, a bit of a dead giveaway that one, but uh, he's definitely worth a giggle. He, he does, um, usually does three films a week, two films and one live stream. Tuesdays and Fridays are his usual upload day and then on a Sunday he'll do a live stream but I usually miss those because I'm usually spending time with the hubby on a Sunday and when you watch the live stream back it's not the same because you, you don't get to see what people are commenting you just get him reacting to what they're commenting so it can be a bit difficult to follow sometimes uh, Stephanie Harlow I really like listening to she's one of these um, real life crime channels where she talks you through um, different crimes that have happened, solved and unsolved. Um, historical ones as well as new ones. She did uh, quite a few on Chris Watts, the dad that killed his wife, his pregnant wife and the kids. Um, she's really good, really intelligent to listen to as well. Very insightful woman. I need to have a bit of a wiggle, hang on a minute, my back is just spasming on me. I'm trying to ease it by leaning forward and back and it's, it's just not working. Okay, I think I'm back again. Right, number eight on the list is Believing Bruce. And he's a guy that analyses body language and the different signs you give away that you don't realise you're giving away. Um, he's been uh, fascinating to listen to. Um, some of the things that he pulls up and you think, yeah, you're right. I, I knew something was off when I watched that, but couldn't work out what it was. And now that you've said that, it's kind of... So again, he's another one that's really... Inte I want to say intellectual, but educational. I feel like... My IQ's gone up a couple of points after watching him rather than down, which I do feel after watching some channels. None of the ones I'm mentioning today, mind. Um, he's a UK chap, by the way. Then there's Dr. Todd Grande, who is an American, and he is a, I believe he's a psychiatrist. Um, and he discusses people in the media and what their behaviours could suggest. He's not diagnosing them, but he's saying this type of behaviour is often linked to this particular mental illness or um, you know, physical ailment or whatever. So again, it's another one where it, it, you really feel like you've learned something. But he's got a wicked wit. He... And he delivers them absolutely deadpan. So you kind of... Did you really just say that? Great. Love it. I love listening to him. He's a real wise crack, you know? And then number ten is Hedda's Haven. Now, long-term viewers will have heard me mention Hedda quite a few times. Uh, she sent me a load of uh, Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, bullet lipsticks. And she sent me a load of little um, deluxe size mascara samples and palettes that she wasn't using and stuff. Um, she and I get on very well. Her channel is very much a... <clears throat> A discussion channel. It's like sitting at your kitchen table with your best mate over a cup of coffee and having a good old gym wag. Um, she also just dis she discusses current affairs. She 
talks through folk stories. Um, again, she talks through real life crimes. At the moment, she's on hiatus because she's dealing with um, some medical issues at the moment. But one of the Headers Haveners has started his own channel, which is Will Empath. Um, and his is very similar to what she was doing. He just chats about stuff that's going on in his life, current affairs. Um, he's actually, he makes wigs, he hand makes wigs because um, in the past due to illnesses that he'd had he suffered a lot of hair loss so he knows how that feels and he got into lace wig making um, so he has got a channel um, so totally just on his wig making but he has this second channel Will Empath where it's very similar to Hedda's Haven. It's like it's like sitting on the sofa with your mate and having a good old chat, you know. And I love it when his cats come up and interrupt him. Um, cats are a very good judge of character, so if a cat comes up and rubs around someone, you can usually trust that person. Um, and he and I have chatted an awful lot privately. Um, you know, through Instagram DMs and stuff. And uh, I like to consider him one of my YouTube friends, one of my buddies. Um, and I'm super, super proud of uh, the way he managed to conquer his fear and get to the dentist recently. So, really well done, Will. I'm super, super proud of you, my friend. So, definitely have a look back at some of Hedda's older films um, so you can get used to her personality and stuff and also you know pop across and have a watch of my friend Will and if you're interested in postiche I believe is the correct term for wig making uh, you can also follow his second channel where he shows you close-up techniques of him doing single and double knotting and and uh, I find that super relaxing to watch and listen to as well right we're two-thirds of the way there now folks number 11 is Jessica Kelgren Fro Fozard I knew I'd stumble over that sorry Jessica she is um, a really beautiful young woman um, and she dresses in 50s style, 40s and 50s style clothing and has 40s and 50s style hairdos and makeup um, she's deaf, she has a number of health issues uh, and she and her wife live together extremely happily and basically she talks you through all kinds of different things uh, how to cope with being disabled, how to cope with people's attitudes towards you when you're disabled um, lesbianism through the ages, that's another one of hers uh, how to achieve the different hairstyles that she does um, she's done cooking bits and bobs, various different vlogs and stuff and uh, I just love watching her. She's just one of those ones that you you can just switch on and know that you're going to enjoy what you're watching, you know. And then number 12, we have Jas Kinyo. Probably mispronounced that one as well. Uh, he and his friend Chris. Again, he started off doing a lot of um, dark web box unboxings like Crypto NWO, like Kevin. Um, but he and his friend Chris do a lot of the Rando Nautica stuff and they've had some real fun and games. They've been chased by cars and vans and 
all kinds of weird things have happened to them. I mean, some of them could be set up, I know, but it's still really entertaining to watch. Right, last three now. Uh, we have Panic Antics, which is Jamie. I love her slay and shade, where she says she does a mediocre makeup look while slating somebody in the YouTube community or in the news or whatever for their behaviour. So she's absolutely brilliant. I actually won a giveaway from her. Uh, it was either the beginning of this year or the beginning of last year. I think it was the beginning of this year. Although it might have been the beginning of last year. Either way, I won a giveaway from her. Um, and she was, bless her, she was so gracious because the initial prize was um, either a $50 voucher for Sephora or Ulta, neither of which we have in the UK. So I, I messaged her and I said, look, I know, I knew what the prizes were when I entered, really wasn't expecting to win, to be honest. Um, we don't have Sephora or Ulta there. Is there any chance that you could either do Beauty Lish, who do deliver to the UK, or maybe Beauty Bay, who are in the UK? Now, she could quite easily have said, look, you knew what the prizes were, bugger off. But she didn't. And she said she'd get me a Beauty Bay voucher. Oh, thank you very much. So I was expecting it to be the UK equivalent of what 50 bucks was, which at the time was about 41, 42 quid. She did the full 50 quid for me, which obviously worked out to more than the 50 bucks than, that she'd originally set as the maximum. So she is such a lovely woman, she really is. Um, and I agree with a lot of her opinions as well on the way that certain people behave and stuff. So. She um she had a while where she wasn't posting, but I noticed she put a film back up again this week, another slaying shade, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm so glad she's back. Uh, 14 and 15 are very similar channels, but I enjoy them both. Uh, 14 is Rachel Maxey. She's an American... Um, redhead, and she also like Jessica lives in vintage style clothing but she makes a lot of her own clothes um, she'll see a dress that she likes in a particular film and then she'll try and recreate it using vintage patterns from the 40s and 50s to try and get the style right she'll go thrift shopping and then try and um, accessorise different pieces to make them look more of the time. Um, and I just love watching, and oh her dog is amazing, Frodo, love him. Um, every time she lays the material out on the floor to start pinning patterns on it, he comes along and he's like, oh, new rug, thanks mum, and just lays flat out on it, which is just hysterical every time. Sometimes she does as well. It lays out flat on it, I mean, not turn into a canine. That would be very weird. Um, and she has a lot of cosplay stuff as well. Or she did when uh, cos, you know, comic conventions were on. Um... So she, you know, she shows you, she made an Oogie Boogie costume from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and she recreated a, a dress that she'd seen from a 1950s advert where it got pumpkins all over it so she remade that. Um, just really, really fun to listen to. Again, she's got a very quirky sense of humour, so she's good fun to watch. 
And last but not least on my list is Karolina Zabrowska. I think I pronounced that right. Or is it? Z it might be Zabrowska. Probably is Zabrowska because she's Polish. Um, she also wears period costume. But we're not just talking 1940s. We're talking 1840s and 1740s and 1910s. And so, she, you know, it, it's nothing to see her recreate a bustle or a corset or... Um, oh, she did this skit where she was a makeup channel from like the 1600s and, and how a makeup channel would have been back then and the different makeup they used. So funny, so funny, and she calls herself your meme auntie because she loves memes. So, um, yeah, that is my 15, technically 17, but uh, non makeup channels that I watch on a very regular basis. So, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you, but they are leaving my films in your suggested list so that you don't realise you've been deleted. How nice. Uh, they also appear to have stopped sending emails, which is bloody frustrating. Um, so, double check because when they did that they also knocked all of mine from all notifications back to personalised so if they do change their mind in a couple of weeks time and start sending emails again if yours don't say all you're probably not going to get any emails at all anyway um, and that's not just for me that's for all the channels that you follow that you've got notifications set for uh, if you're new here however and you've tripped over me in some other way hi hello welcome hope you enjoyed it um this style is pretty much what you get from me i live with chronic pain 24 7 i have done for years it's only ever going to get worse uh there's never a minute of any day that i'm not in pain and i also have fibro which as well as being painful, gives me moments when I forget what I'm saying right in the middle of a sentence. I forget words that I have known for years. Like educational. As I did earlier on in this one. Um, I say um a lot more than I ever used to. I try and cut as many of them out as possible, but... Uh, yeah, it can be a bit frustrating. But, as well as films like this, uh, I have an awful lot of other films that I've created. So it would be lovely if you would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. And it's super easy to join us. All you have to do is hit that red subscribe button then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will start sending emails again soon. In the meantime, as I said, awful lot of other films you can be catching up on from product reviews, makeup tutorials, challenges, collabs, tag films, films like this. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. I'm told I have quite a soothing voice too, so I'm quite good to listen to of an evening. If you want to lull yourself off to sleep, I, I really won't be offended if my voice lulls you off to the land of a sleepy by time. Okay, I clearly need to go and get another coffee. So as I have said, for what feels like time immemorial, Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, 
pick a playlist and prepared to just indulge for a bit listening to me waffle at you and in most cases applying coloured pigments to my face right my lovely ones as ever all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.